It's not on him and he's a horn up. And the hen and the horn and he and the horn. Can I turn it off? Yeah, it's turned off, yeah. Okay, hold it here. And then can the hen. Hi, Lani, should we get the car? Hey, good morning. We've um, come down to Hawaii Kai for lunch today. There's a place we want to check out called BYO Bowls. Uh, kind of like the Pyology place or like Subway, but I think they're bowls, so stir fries and that sort of thing. Uh, and we need to get some meat to go to Costco just over there. Bit of a slow morning this morning. Um, just spent time with the girls. Barney had a nap, but it was like a late nap, so I kind of pushed everything back. But yeah, it'll be really be the last day today before I hit work tomorrow, so just kind of enjoying the time off. Let's go get some bowls. This is a completely, uh, completely customized food place, kind of like Biology or like Subway. You choose the meat you want, choose what you want on the bottom, on the top. So it's a good way of kind of eating healthier. And it's cheap, it's 10 bucks, which is good. I forgot to film mine, but trusty Gail and her slow eating means there's always something to film. <laughs> Oh, you got your dough noodles. Yeah, dough noodles. That's my daughter. Check out this drawing that Jazzy did this morning. I was super impressed. I mean, it's the first kind of drawing she's done that has actual shape to it. She called it Alani holding poo at Christmas. That's literally the, the description she gave me. Alani holding poo at Christmas. And then she showed, she pointed out exactly what it was. This is the holding of the poo. It's snowing, it's such Christmas, you know, she's got monster eyes apparently now. I'm impressed. Most of her drawings are just squiggles that turn into nothing. This is at least a body shape. And we've got a mouth, we've got two eyes. She is a genius. I've been promising I would do this for a couple of days now. I want to talk about 2017 and what it holds for us here in Hawaii. Um, being here is a dream, and you know, I mean, obviously, you hear me say that all the time, but it really is. I mean, the fact that we get to live here, I get to run a company in Australia, like it's just such a blessing to be able to do that. But 2017 is going to be a big year. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've got a couple of goals I'm going to share with you, and. Um, yeah, I guess it's another level of accountability, but also I can watch this back at the end of the year and see if I've actually kicked any of them. Um, 2017, I'm going to learn Japanese. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you'll know that uh, it's really built around the Japanese tourist market. Right? The, the signs are in English and they're in Japanese. There's buses that only Japanese can take. There's shops that are built just for the Japanese. Uh, there's all sorts of like discounts that Japanese people get here. I don't know why that is. It must be a pre-war thing is my guess, but for, for whatever reason, um, Japanese is the main language other than English here so and I've always wanted to learn it I've wanted to learn it for a long time partially because I would love to live in Japan as well at some point um, Charity grew up in Japan spent 10 years there before she moved to Australia um, so we have Japanese roots there both her parents worked in Japan they still work with Japanese people um, and they speak Japanese fluently so it's something I really want to do. So um, I've looked at the university down the road, University of Hawaii, in uh, August, the fall semester starts. So I'm going to roll there and learn Japanese. Um, I want to learn at the university because I, I, from my experience, I did university French when I was back at university. And then I've also done language courses outside of university and they're just not even comparative. If you go to a course outside of university, you're going to learn phrases and you're going to learn how to how to say a few things, but learning at university, they teach you from the ground up, and that's what I really want. Um, so I'm going to go do that. It'll be a couple of classes a week, I'm guessing, which is what I want. You know, I want to be saturated in it, so I pick it up. Um, I tried to do Chinese or Mandarin for a while, and it was really hard because I couldn't read it. That was the thing I struggled with the most. At least with French, I could read it. I could try to work out what it's trying to say, but Chinese, I could not at all. Now my fear is Japanese will be exactly the same. That being said, at least Japanese is not tonal like Chinese was. Right? In Chinese, ma and ma are completely different things. Japanese, that's not the same. So I'm hoping Japanese will be a little bit easier. 
I would not at all say that I'm a natural language guy. Um, it's always come hard to me, but I'm gonna give it a try because I think that, like I said, if we live there one day, I'd love to speak the language. Uh, if we don't leave Hawaii, at least it's a valuable, valuable language to, to bring into business and whatever it is we choose to do. Um, in addition, I'm gonna play a whole lot more music this year. Uh, a couple of years ago, music was kind of everything for me. I, I played in a band and we tour on the weekends. I released my own little electronic album. Um, but the last couple of years, that's kind of waned, I guess, uh, with kids and that sort of thing, but I really wanna get back into it. So, you know, I bought my gear over from Australia, I bought my bass guitar, I bought two guitars, I bought a keyboard. Um, so I just want to put them to use. Whatever that, I don't know what that's going to look like, whether it be I, I join a band or I go play at a church, whatever. I just want to play some music. So I've been asking around to people here if they know anyone and a couple of names have popped up. So hopefully, hopefully we'll make something happen there. In terms of business, this is a super exciting year for, for um, my business back home in Australia, but also what I want to get going here. Now back in Australia, I run an education company. Um, I've been doing it for a long, long time. The beginning of last year, actually no, it was probably halfway through 2015, uh, some, ex some, some external shareholders came on board in I guess a consulting uh, arrangement, I guess you could say that. So they didn't work full time in the company, but they just came on a, as advisors. That's probably a better term, advisory roles. Um, Starting 2017, one of them is coming on full-time, which is really cool. So terrifying because we have to pay them a full-time wage, but the uh, amount of value that they're going to bring is, is going to be significant. So I'm so excited about that. That literally starts next week where he comes on full-time. It's going to actually free me up a lot to be able to focus on other components of the business that are much more my strength, right? I am good at content creation and I enjoy social and I enjoy customer service. What I'm not good at, at are reports and um, yeah, the details. That's never been my strength. So he's, he's very good at that and he's going to look after that. Looking forward to that. In terms of the businesses here, I have two ideas that I'm going to start pursuing. One as early as tomorrow. Uh, it's called Cart to Curb. Super simple business. Uh, the idea is we, we work with elderly, not even elderly, we work with people helping them get their bins from their yard to the curb every week. We charge them $2 a week to take it out and bring it back in the next day. Super simple business, um, but I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know if it's a hit idea or not. I'm just gonna go door to door the rest of this week and just see what happens. Um, the good thing about it is that it's a very low cost business. There's no capital needed up front. I can literally go around to people's houses, knock on their door, say, here's what we wanna do. In my mind, $2 a week is such a small amount that why wouldn't they pay it, right? I would pay it, right, for the convenience. Other business idea is, is that I wanna do something in food. I love food. Um, in particular, I wanna do something with donuts. I love donuts. Literally, outside of my family and uh, Formula One, donuts are my next great love in life. Um, so yeah, I want to start kind of a boutique, a high-end donut company here in, in Honolulu. There isn't one, we don't have Krispy Kreme, we don't have Dunkin' Donuts, we've got a couple of family restaurants or family bakeries around the place, uh, but no brands. So, and that's what I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about brand building. So I feel like uh, it's something that I would really, really love to do. That being said, I've never baked a donut in my life, so I'm going to have to actually learn from scratch. Uh, my wife keeps laughing at this idea because I literally have never made a donut. I don't know how to do it. But I feel like if you can get the recipe right, or I mean, I could even outsource the main baking of the, the base donut and then uh, and then decorate it in, in house. Um, that's it. I mean, those those three things. 2016 for me was a very chilled year. Um, the education company is very passive. And so I didn't have to do a whole lot. I could get by on minimal hours and not do a whole lot. And I really want to change that in 2017. So, trying to pack those three business ideas in there um, and hopefully we'll find success in one of them. That's it, I mean, 2017, I'm really looking forward to it. There's a whole lot of other things we wanna do. You know, we wanna put aside a date night each week. Um, we wanna go away for Charity's 30th birthday, which is in May. Um, it, it, it keeps moving, she wanted to go to New York and then she wanted to go to Disney World and then she decided maybe Disneyland is just easier in California. Then she said Tokyo Disneyland. Um, I'm happy with whatever, happy to do whatever she wants to do. Um, but yeah, look, it's gonna be a great year. We're really looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing the girls grow. I plan on continuing daily vlogging. Um, as I've said before, I'm simply doing it for a record of what we're doing. I'm not trying to build a following. Um, yeah, it's just simply recording what we're doing. In addition, it makes me kind of do something creative every day. 
um, if I just film me working every day, it's going to get really boring. Whereas if I have the pressure of making a video every day, um, it's going to challenge me to try and find something interesting to do. That's it. I've got them written here, 2017 goals. Let's do this.